I'm David Coatney, and I'm a web designer. The beauty of web design is that my clients are scattered all over the country. That gives me the ability to live where I want, travel where I want, and do work on the road. Along the way, I like to check out unique places, so I encourage you to join me on these adventures. Everyone knows about mainstream hotels and franchise restaurants, but I want to hit up the truly unique. From weird restaurants and lodging to unusual laws, history, and towns, this is the states you think you know. This week, we're in the state of California. California is the most populous state in the country. It's also one of the most geographically diverse, with nine national parks. It has everything from deserts to giant forests, mountains, and coastlines. There's no shortage of things to do in California either, so let's jump right in. Our first stop is the state's capital, Sacramento. All aboard! Tonight, I'm going to be staying on a historic riverboat that has since been beautifully restored and recommissioned as a floating hotel and restaurant. The Delta King is one of two identical riverboats christened on May 20th, 1927, the other being the Delta Queen. These 285-foot boats would venture between San Francisco and Sacramento from 1927 to 1940, offering passengers prohibition-era drinking, jazz bands, gambling, and fine dining. The Delta Queen would eventually find its way down to New Orleans and is still functioning as a riverboat to this day. The Delta King, however, was scrapped for parts and left partially submerged in the San Francisco Bay. The Delta King kind of became a derelict. It was trans transported between Canada and San Francisco and kind of all over the place um, where it originally ended up sinking in the San Francisco Bay and was underwater for about 15 months. And then the Coyne family restored it in 84 and it was opened as a hotel in 1989 here in Sacramento. After five years of being restored to its former glory, the Delta King finally reopened to the public on the same Sacramento River it sailed all those years ago. The Delta King Hotel is described as a Sacramento treasure, combining the history and charm of the original riverboats into a modern hotel. And now the boat even comes complete with two highly acclaimed restaurants, live entertainment, they even have a theater. 420, here we are. All right. This is nice. Yeah, this is very, uh, very cozy here. Actually got a full-size desk, do some work. I'm guessing this is a, a closet. A couple end tables, I don't see a uh, TV anywhere unless it's, I'm guessing maybe it's in here. Ah, TV. Perfect. Coffee pot, most important meal of the day. They even have a study. Let's go in the study here. Don't have a normal flusher. It looks like they have one of those old uh, pull handles there. I'm sure the technical term is not pull handle. And then from there, oh, I don't, I'm not gonna speculate where it goes. Well, after a long day of driving, I'm looking forward to laying back on the, ooh, bed's really comfortable too. That's nice. Ah. Now this boat is five stories tall and as you walk around, you see a ton of old photos. This place kind of feels like a museum. It's flooded with photos. Well, maybe flooded is the best word to use in this particular case, but it has a lot of photos from the early days when the boat was actually functioning as a riverboat. Now this is the captain's quarters. As you might expect, this is the largest suite available. Sadly, it's not available tonight, but this is really nice. Let's take a look around. My time here at Delta King Hotel was wonderful. Let's see what else we can find in California. Every state has strange laws still on the books, things that make us scratch huh? our heads. They're rarely enforced, but still entertaining. These are the strange laws of California. No vehicle without a driver may exceed 60 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm thinking you might have other problems. 
Now, it's not clear from the verbiage what this law is referring to, but I'm assuming, hoping, that the aim of this law was in reference to vehicles other than gas-powered cars. In Fresno, it is illegal to annoy a lizard in a city park. Seriously, guys, the lizards have had enough, all right? They've heard all your knock-knock jokes. They know you can burp the alphabet, and no, they don't want to listen to you sing Summer Nights for the 15th time. In Carmel, ice cream may not be eaten on the sidewalk. Now, this law was aimed at cleaning up the sidewalks, but was repealed by none other than Clint Eastwood when he served as mayor of Carmel. In Arcadia, peacocks have the right of way to cross any street, including driveways. Now, true story, I was actually chased across a parking lot by a peacock uh, a few years back of a corporate office building. Uh, now, that was in South Florida, and believe it or not, it's actually a, a problem down there. Not sure why the law exists in California, though. In Chico, detonating a nuclear device within the city limits will result in a $500 fine. Now, from what I understand, this law was passed in 1962 as a form of protest after an accident occurred at a nearby silo. And while not entirely serious, it still begs the question, who's going to collect the fine? During the boom years of the California gold rush, miners would frequently send this to Honolulu due to the extremely high costs in California. Is it A, prescription medications, B, their laundry, C, shoe alterations, or D, their photo development? Stay tuned for the answer. My next spot takes glamping to a whole new level. Tree Bones Resort is an off-grid resort in a place where the ocean meets the mountains in the most awe-inspiring of settings, Big Sur, California. Tree Bones is best described as an eco-resort and offers unique lodging opportunities ranging from yurts, twig huts, and even a human nest. The best part is, it's in an area known for having some of the most scenic beaches in the world. The vision behind Tree Bones Resort is to create a place that would be a lodging experience. I uh, and my wife wanted to create a place that when you went there, it'd be different than any place you'd ever stayed before. We wanted to really perch lightly on the land, and that means that we don't tear everything down. An animal doesn't tear the tree down when it builds its home. It basically builds it in the tree or by the tree and with the natural terrain. The ideas for the nest and the twig hut came from a local artist named Jason Fan. And he was building these structures that looked like giant bird's nests out of eucalyptus branches. We built the first one in 2008 here with Jason. And uh, it wasn't meant to be a lodging unit. It sort of became a lodging unit by popular demand. Both my family, my staff, and then guests were, would discover how fun it was to stay overnight in the nest. Now it's uh, someone staying it almost every night of the year. Now I won't be staying in the nest tonight, but I had to at least check it out. Now this nest is not for the birds, although I suppose if any take a liking to it, there's always the possibility uh, you might have visitors. You know, it's surprisingly spacious, more than I would have expected. And the views of the Pacific Ocean from your bed are absolutely breathtaking. This one seems to book up fast and I can certainly see why. Now, something to keep in mind, while you are completely enclosed by the nest, you're also subject to the same elements that any bird would be. Wind, rain, cold temperatures, bugs. So while it is considered glamping, it's more for the novelty of it than anything else. If comfort glamping is your thing, you may want to try one of the yurts. But if it's a once in a lifetime experience you're looking for, it's pretty hard to beat this. We have the nest in the twig hut, but we also have yurts and they're a lightweight structure. So they use minimum materials and they can sit up on stilts uh, and let the land flow underneath them. We also have a tree house, which is exactly like it sounds. It's a building built in the trees. Tonight, I will be staying in the twig hut. This hut was built by a local artist by the name of Jason Fan, and it is a true work of art. It is a hand-woven two-story hut, which provides breathtaking views of the ocean and has a nice full-size futon pad inside. That's very spacious. Got plenty of room back here. And the futon pad has room for you and your uh, significant other with a nice little window 
looking out over the ocean there. Let's go see what's downstairs. All right, so here looks like you have a nice, cozy little nook area with a, a couch for sitting, relaxing, watching the ocean. Great views. Well guys, thanks for joining me on another adventure. Uh, it's supposed to get a little chillier later tonight, so I'm just gonna wear my sweater to bed, uh, try to get some sleep, and then uh, tomorrow I'll probably check out some nearby beaches and drive down to Los Angeles. Good night. So what would Gold Rush Miner send to Honolulu? If you guessed B, laundry, you guessed correctly. As absurd as it may sound, the cost of washing and pressing was so high in California during those days that miners would actually send their laundry to Hawaii, and in some cases, even China. And you thought your laundromat was far away. Today, we're in Los Angeles. LA is known for a lot of things. Hollywood, theme parks, a thriving music scene, and of course, ridiculous traffic. LA also has a long, interesting history. Its original name was El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora Reina de Los Angeles sobre el Rio Porciuncula, or, you know, EPD and SRD LASERP for short. And yeah, that took a little bit of practice. Fortunately, the name was eventually shortened to Los Angeles. Can you imagine saying that every time? Jeez Louise. Now, let's go get our cereal buzz on. My next stop ventures into new innovative territory as the latest in dessert revolution. It's a dessert lounge called Milk Tavern and provides a wide range of alcoholic sweet treats. And it's the only ice cream and cereal bar where I actually have to show my ID. This place is an adult playground. Everything you ever dreamed of as a child, you can now have as an adult. From cereal milkshakes to liquor infused ice cream, wine slushies, and they even have, get this, a champagne float. The inspiration came from uh, the owners living here uh, for 15 years in Koreatown. It was always the same Korean barbecue places, the same bars, uh, not a lot of different things to do. And so they wanted to create a space that was more unique, a little bit in between all of that. Uh, Some place where you can bring your coworkers and anyone who wants to drink can drink, anyone who wants to eat um, can get an ice cream if they're not feeling up to it. There's an impressive selection of toppings and cereals that can be added to cereal bowls, milkshakes, ice cream swirls. Well, here it is. I got a vanilla infused milkshake mixed with brownie bites, topped off with Reese's Puff cereal, and of course, the magic ingredient, bourbon. Mmm, that is so good. Why more places don't mix liquor and ice cream? I have no idea. This is amazing. Mm. I would pretend to hate my job right now, but you probably wouldn't believe me. Well, I couldn't leave without trying one of their signature desserts, the cotton candy ice cream burrito. It has a cotton candy wrap on the outside, ice cream in the middle, and a cereal of your choice. I'm going with Apple Jacks. Well, here it is, the cotton candy ice cream burrito. I have to admit, I'm a little intimidated by this one. Here goes nothing. Mm. Wow. That is really unexpected. The juxtaposition of biting into cotton candy and then hitting that cold, smooth ice cream center it's truly unique. You know, I find myself going through different stages of wow in this place. The Owen Wilson inside of me, because we all have an inner Owen Wilson, tried the ice cream milkshake and said, wow. But then he tried the cotton candy burrito and he said, wow. Seriously though, where was this thing when I was five? I would have loved this. At 40, it's a little sweet for me. I don't know if I'll be able to finish the whole thing, but definitely worth the experience. And now it is time for your top five countdown of most interesting names for cities and towns in the state of California. Coming in at number five is an unsurprising pick for Cali, Weed. Upon visiting Weed, make sure you stop by number four on our list. 
a small California town that I'm sure was named by hippies. Happy Camp. And number three has irony written all over it. Mormon Bar. For those that don't get it, Mormons don't drink. Number two, Rough and Ready. I'm not sure what they're rough and ready for, but it's worth mentioning they're not too far from the town of Hooker. I'll just leave it at that. And at number one, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Zygzz. Perhaps, if you're ever in the town of Zygzz, you can ask one of the locals. Today, I'm traveling back in time. And what better way to do that than aboard a Pan Am? the preferred method of transportation for time travelers. Pan Am Experience is a movie set at Air Hollywood that is built as an exact replica of a 1973 Pan Am flight. It lets you experience the golden age of travel firsthand and has also been used in several blockbuster films. So Talat, explain where we are right now. We are at the largest aviation film studio. We serve the film industry, uh, commercials, TV, music video, still photography, we film for everybody that takes place on an airplane or airports. Even the airline can shoot their commercial with us. So basically, someone needs an airplane shot for one of their movies, this is the place to come. It is, it is. This is the place that, you know, the minute you see it in the script, there's an airplane or airport scene, they come here. What films have been shot here? Uh, we just shot recently, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with, uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and uh, Margot Robbie and director Quentin Tarantino. We shot uh, Bridesmaid, the, uh, we've shot CSI, we shot uh, Grey's Anatomy. I mean, we've done every TV show and every commercials, including Apple, Samsung, um, IHOP, any commercial that you can see in the industry that it takes place on an airplane is done in our studio. Okay, and the recent Tar uh, Tarantino film, that was actually shot here on this set? Correct. Okay. It was shot on the upper deck and also on the lower deck. And they shot here, and it was in the 1960s. So now we're bored the Pan Am experience right now. How much attention to detail was placed into making sure it was historically accurate? The, the way we, we do our experience is everything has to be original. Everything has to be exactly the same as it was in 1970. From the magazine to the perfume, to the china, to the silverware, everything has to be an original. Even the menu, when we serve the food, is exactly the way it was served in 1970. We work with the chef to make sure everything is perfect. We, we, we test it and test it until it becomes really perfect, and that's what we use for our menu. And this was back in the days when you could actually smoke aboard an airplane, right? Yeah, but you also have to dress to come on board. Right. Everybody used to dress because it was not cheap to get on airplanes in the old days. So people used to smoke and used to have lunches. I mean, it was, uh, for them, it was the journey. It's more important than the destination. So let's talk about the dinners, because I know you guys do more than just function as a movie set. Yeah, we do dinner on weekends. So we do it on Saturdays. Everyone comes in at 6 p.m. and we finish around 11.30 at night. What we do is we do the, uh, we, start, we start getting in with the crew. You come in, drinks, appetizer, and after every course that we do, we do a fashion show. So all the girls, we have 24 uh, flight crew that comes in here and we really, everyone changed their uniforms and they show off the uniform in the 60s and the 70s and 80s and 90s. Well, it's been a fun adventure, but I think it's time for my departure. I appreciate you taking the time out of your, you your so schedule to coming. show us around. I really yeah. appreciate it, you guys visiting us. And we are Air Hollywood, we are the safest airline in the world. <laughs> I, I, I don't doubt that one bit. True or false, California's population is greater than that of Canada's. Stay tuned for the answer. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Ah. Hey guys, Beetle House is a unique Tim Burton themed bar on Hollywood Boulevard in Los Angeles. This one of a kind bar started in New York City as a place where you could interact with your favorite Tim Burton characters, kick back in a gothic atmosphere, and be as freaky as you want. It did so well, they decided to open a second location in Los Angeles, and that's where I am today. Here, you can watch Tim Burton films on the big screen and enjoy great food like the Edward Burger Hands, the Cheshire Mac and Cheese, and the Linguini Todd. As for me, I'm going to mosey up to the bar for a haunting beverage. Well, they have some interesting drinks here, like Alice's cup of tea and Beetle's juice, but I decided to go with the Big Fish Bowl. Big Fish is actually one of my wife's favorite movies, so I figured, why not? 
Plus, it sounded delicious. Coconut rum, vodka, gin, tequila, blue caraca, pineapple juice, and for that extra special touch, they added some dry ice. Let's give it a shot. Mmm, that's very tasty. Well, you can really taste that coconut rum, too. That's good. Here's the Joker. <laughs> Such haunting beverage. <laughs> haunting that beverage. Smile. <laughs> the states yeah. you think you know. It's up unique locations. State of depression, state of <laughs> happiness. Yes. You know, one thing about Hollywood that people don't understand is that they make smut movies. They like to make me out to be the bad guy. And I'm not the bad guy. No. All I want to do is put a smile on people's faces, right? Right. Exactly. What's your name? David. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm to meet judge. you as well. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <I got him. laughs> Well, nice to meet you, nice David. Nice to meet you as well. To all you out there, welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Never know what's going to happen here. <laughs>As expected, this bar is full of Burton-esque decor, but what's really cool is it also features Tim Burton-themed artwork, which has been created and donated by actual fans. came from my partner Zach Neal. Um, he uh, grew up a huge Tim Burton fan and uh, also a Halloween fan and so he wanted to kind of create a space that would showcase both and uh, I think he did a great job. First you can expect good customer service. It kind of starts there at the door uh, all the way through from our wait staff to our bartenders to our management, our hosts. Everything uh, is really revolving around customer service and then you can expect great food great cocktails, and then of course you can always expect to see great photo ops and uh, just a really, really, really fun Tim Burton themed restaurant. My favorite is the Sweeney Beef, and it's an eight ounce steak, flat steak. Comes on a bed of uh, mashed potatoes. Another of the favorites is our uh, mac and cheese. It's a truffled mac and cheese. Super, super good. The chef did a great job with that. You know, we've gotten a lot of good feedback. Uh, a lot of Tim Burton or Halloween fans just love the theme, and so they come in and they really enjoy it. It's, it's, one of our mottos is it's Halloween every day here. And so uh, when you come in, you get a little bit of, of everything. You get the theme, you get uh, great service and great food and great drinks. So is California's population really greater than Canada's? If you guessed true, then you guessed correctly. Canada's population hovers around 37 million while California's population is closer to 40 million. Holy raviolis, Batman! That's the Batcave! Hey guys, we are here at Bronson Cave, named after nearby Bronson Avenue. This is actually a pretty cool spot, and you have great views of the Hollywood sign from the cave. It has appeared in a number of movies, going back to the early days of Hollywood, and most notably was used as the Bat Cave in 1966's Batman with Adam West. Now the cave is actually pretty short, so using some Hollywood magic and a little bit of common sense, they would film at an angle and leave the rest to your imagination. Well, it looks like that wraps up another week in another adventure. California certainly didn't disappoint. Most of the talk these days seems to be about a great migration out of the state, but California is still a place of opportunity, breathtaking beauty, and exploration. And almost two centuries later, people still head west to pursue their dreams. As for me, I'm heading to Oregon now, so stay tuned for the next episode of The States You Think You Have.